What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Raw review. This one is from May 16th, 1994. So, as you heard there from Top Head and Gale, the show started off with the hype video of Yokozuna vs. Earthquake in a sumo match. Vince is smiling ear to ear because he's happy to do anything that isn't wrestling, I bet. The chemistry between Vince and these superstars is so odd to see in 2021. Macho Man and him talk to each other like they really know each other because they probably were close to each other in real life. But to think that Vince gives a shit about any of his superstars in 2021 just doesn't seem like it's real life. So, the first match of the night was Sparky Plug versus Bam Bam Bigelow. And agreed by Bam Bam for a near fall, and then he goes into a rest hold. During the match when I heard that it was actually a King of the Ring qualifier, I went into this start of the match not knowing if it was or not. I was like, wait, two guys that are kind of established? In terms of Sparky Plug, obviously Bam Bam Bigelow is, but Sparky Plug is new to the roster. So, I was like, two guys that are established having a match for no reason. I was like, oh, a rare occasion here, but no, it's actually a King of the Ring qualifier, so I guess it wasn't as rare of a match like I thought. Sparky hits a DDT and climbs the top rope and hits a crossbody, but Bigelow kicks out. Bam Bam, with a little help from Luna on the outside, hits a slingshot splash from the apron and gets the win and qualifies for the tournament. During the King of the Ring update, we learn that Diesel will challenge for the WWF title against Bret Hart. Seeing that the card will already be full of matches because of the tournament, they don't really need Diesel to defend his belt for an extra match, and he's on a hot streak, so why not? I'm fine with that, but where is Shawn Michaels? He hasn't been announced for any qualifying matches, so why isn't he getting this title shot over Diesel? Razor, even though he hasn't gotten his rematch, at least he was put in the tournament. Or else I'd be saying, why not Razor Ramon, since he was the last IC champion. Now it's time to push him into the WWF title. But he's in the tournament, so I get that, but Shawn Michaels, where are you? Then Diesel comes out and gets a win over a jobber with a jackknife. We also had another Undertaker sighting. This time some guy says that he saw him on top of a hearse while he was filling up with gas. Last week it was someone saying they saw him while doing some yard work. I don't know why this has to do with anything. Why would Taker be at random places instead of just being back in the WWF? And if he's gone, why isn't he trying to stay out of people's sight? Why is he being so obvious is what I'm trying to get at. We then get another King's Court. Lawler is taking on Roddy Piper at the next pay-per-view. He talks some trash to Piper, but all the jokes fall flat because the crowd doesn't react one way or the other. His guest this week is Ted DiBiase with his newest purchase, Nikolai Volkov. Volkov hates DiBiase, but he's down in the dumps, so he has to put up with the million dollar man if he wants to get paid. DiBiase snatches his hat off and tells him that he needs to dress proper if he's going to be working for him. He shows him his new attire, which is of course coming out of his paycheck. The back of his tights say, property of the million dollar man. DiBiase also tells him to take off his American and Russian flag jacket. Volkov hesitates, but does it anyways. DiBiase gets him a shirt, which has a tuxedo design on the front and property of DiBiase on the back. And instead of dollar signs, it has cent signs, which I thought it was a funny touch. I vaguely remember seeing Volkov in this shirt, but I never knew how he came to start wearing it. This did drag on a little bit too long, but the point was made. And whether or not people will get behind Volkov is yet to be seen, so let's see how this continues. Right now, the crowd was indifferent to the whole thing. They kind of were cheering him, but it was just kind of like an anti-American thing when he was taking off his clothing. And since he has been saying that he's a U.S. citizen or whatever, the crowd was behind him for that. But the crowd really didn't care what was happening to Volkov. I mean, some people were cheering in there, but for the most part, it was kind of just they were all sitting on their hands. But yeah, moving on from that, Owen Hart out next and picks up another win versus a jobber. And after the match, he tells Brett to watch because what he did to his opponent is going to be him. Then after the match, he gives the jobber a spinning leg kick and puts the Hitman glasses on him and then snaps them while he was wearing them. It sounds stupid, but if I remember to add that clip, it looks really painful. Owen is scheduled to take on Earthquake next week in a qualifier for the King of the Ring. So again, I'm going to ask, why Diesel and not Shawn Michaels? Owen could also be in contention for the title, but he's in the tournament. But HBK doesn't have any excuse not to be in that title match. At least what I know of. Maybe he's injured, I don't know. Finally, the time has arrived for the sumo match. The ropes have been removed, and the first one to knock their opponent out of the ring will be the winner. If there's one thing that WWF fans hate more than superstars that they don't know in a match, it's when they do stuff that doesn't involve wrestling. They take about 3-5 to five minutes before they touch... But as soon as they notice that the crowd is booing, they finally hook up. Who knows if that was planned or if they were like, you know what, let's just go for it. I don't really know how to review a sumo match, but they were just taking turns pushing each other until Earthquake is able to shove Yokozuna down, and he rolls out of the ring, and Earthquake gets the win. Macho Man runs into the ring and celebrates with Earthquake to let the fans know that this should be a big deal and that we should be cheering this guy. 
Is this a push for Earthquake or is this just a one-off? I, I don't understand. I know Earthquake came back for WrestleMania and he squashed Adam Bomb for whatever reason. Then he beat him again and now he's beaten the former WWF champion. So where do they go from here with Earthquake? And that's basically the end of Raw, so let's get to the awards. For the best moment, in terms of a moment that I enjoyed, there wasn't really a big one that stood out, but I'll give it to the announcement that Owen Hart is in the King of the Ring tournament. Uh, nothing really to pick from. And since he's going to probably beat Earthquake after what we just saw, I like that it's going to be another big win for Owen on his way to the pay-per-view. It might be through some DQ or count-on situation, but whatever. Worst moment, everything surrounding the sumo match. I'm just going to leave it like that. Wackus performer, Yokozuna. I could also give it to Earthquake, but at least he used to be a real sumo wrestler. Yokozuna has just been living a lie for his whole career. He's not Japanese, and he probably knows nothing about being a sumo wrestler. So this loss here hopefully sends him further away from the top of the card. Standout performer, I'm going to give it to Owen Hart, I guess. He had a decent showing in the match, and the stuff after where he's telling Brett that he better be watching, and the beatdown after on the jobber was some good stuff, so standout performer goes to Owen Hart on this one. And for this episode, while the main event didn't belong on a wrestling show, at least there was somewhat of a build to it, probably beats having to watch them in a real match for 10 minutes, so so there's that. We did get another qualifying match with Bam Bam Bigelow. Owen and Diesel getting wins because they're both getting pushes right now makes sense. And the Kings Court, with actual storyline advancement, made this a well-booked show for 1994 at least. So I'm going to give this a good grade. And with all that being said, I'm out. I'll catch you guys next time.